I mentioned at the start the the the, the news that we weren't expecting today. Uh, the tweet from David Ornstein at uh, lunchtime: Manchester United working on a deal to appoint Jason Wilcox to a senior post in the new Manchester United setup. Uh, I haven't checked Twitter for the last hour, but uh, at the time it said Manchester United yet to approach Southampton for the highly rated director of football, but the 52-year-old is aware of interest. Job would report into a sporting director. Um, Glenn, I'm just going to get your thoughts on this first. It feels to me like we've been here before, but that wasn't really the news we wanted to read this afternoon. It's a bit, oh. No, and it it always annoys me because it's obviously Manchester United leaking stuff to... um you know, to the athletic who let's, let's remember the athletic don't care about saints at all. So with them even got a reporter for us at the moment. So, mm. uh, um, don't read the athletic. Um, yeah, but you know, David Ornstein is obviously a reputable source and, uh, yeah, it's somewhat annoying just when we begin to get things, uh, going in the right direction, it would certainly be a bit of a, a bit of a problem if, um, if that happened, but you know, if it, if it does happen, then, um, Sport Republic have to deal with it. Uh, I feel like we haven't mentioned Sport Republic for quite a while, and that's because we haven't had to because they've which is a very good thing, yeah. absolutely because they've kept in the background and let Jason Wilcox and Russell Martin get on with it. So one would hope that you know, should it come to it, uh, and Wilcox does go um, after you know he'd have a he'd have quite a sizable notice period. We were discussing this before the program, I think. So it would probably wouldn't be until the end of this season. That he did go, but um, you you would hope that Sport Republic would get someone else in and uh, not appoint someone from within. And we all know who I'm talking about. So uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, big, the big brain himself, the big brain well, the- himself. So yeah, so uh, you know, it, it's at the end of the day, it's it's backroom staff. It's very important backroom mm-hmm. staff. Obviously, let's not let's not uh, make it out to be less than what it is. Um, and it it would be a blow because he he's only been here what six months yeah yeah and uh, I think everyone everyone was happy with the appointment and everyone's been happy with the the way it's gone and he's uh, he's obviously got his finger on the pulse of um, you know young players from his academy days at uh, at Manchester City so uh, let's hope it is uh, you know it is smoke without fire but you. You kind of fear the worst when it's when it's Manchester United. It's like one of your players getting linked to them. You you know that if it's if it's concrete, the chances are it's going to happen. He's not going to say no, is he, Steve? If if that if if they do make the offer, he's not going to turn that down. I mean, we assume that you know family and stuff uh, in uh, in and around Manchester and a chance to, to to go back and obviously double maybe three times the money and and working for a, a, a huge club. It, it, it's it's an offer that you can't turn down, really. Um, yeah, I would imagine so. It's, I mean, I kind of always liken these sort of backroom um, jobs to kind of, they're almost kind of normal jobs in many regards. So, but essentially not footballers who have theoretically other considerations, um, but they're these, these sort of director roles and scouting and recruitment and all this sort of stuff. They're kind of almost like the, their football's kind of answer to normal, the normal jobs that, that you and I have. In the ultimately, if you're within the industry and you're offered three times your salary to go and work for a bigger organization where you get more responsibility, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, of course, you're going to take that. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what um, what their actual specifics in, are in terms of the plan for him, because obviously he's got full. Con- he's basically got full control here. Um, and it's possible that in five months' time, he's got full control as it, in that position at a Premier League football club. So does I mean would he won't have that at Manchester United? Obviously, because I mean massive club. You're talking silly money, and also they're seemingly going to be bringing um, Dan Ashcroft in from Newcastle to yeah. to kind of head up the the sort of non the sort of off field um sort of operations and so he's gonna so he's kind of the gonna be the guy in charge um and he's the one that's got got the fantastic sort of long-term track record of excellent recruitment and um scouting and and managing sort of from a financial perspective um all of the 
the sort of various things that the I guess the the elite clubs don't need to worry about in terms of signing players for not much and polishing them up and selling them on for massive profit to, mm. to stay within FFP. Now, Man United don't really have that many concerns, I don't think, on on that front. So it, it'll be interesting to see what, what the remit is for what, what they would want Wilcox to do, because it will be very different from the job that he's done with us and the job that he did previously at Man City, which is obviously very academy focused. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess wait, wait and see what happens on that. But I mean, you'd like to think that, um, I mean, as soon as we've got wind of it, we're, we're already sounding out, yeah. um, potential replacements who can, who can start quickly. Cause this um, is not our first rodeo, is it? You know, we've been here before with Joe Shields. Um, I was trying to think like Matt Crocker, Paul Mitchell back in the day as well. We've always had these people behind the scenes that have been really good directors of football or heads of recruitment and, and they've left, of course, as they would for better jobs. And we've always seemingly been able to replace them with somebody as good, sometimes better. Mostly. Mostly. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, look at the previous, the previous four, previous four years didn't go quite so well on the recruitment front, but I think, um, yeah, you, I mean, certainly there is more, there is more understanding now in the game in this country about what these sort of roles entail. Mm. And as a result, it's, um, clubs are a lot better at finding people who have got the right skill sets, as opposed to just picking an ex player who maybe failed as a manager and, um, uh, but still want still wants a job in the game, and somebody and their agent just gets in the ear of a club and says, "Yeah, give why not give him give him a job as um, director of football? See how that goes." Hmm. Um, and yeah, and then it all goes all goes horribly wrong. I'm, I mean, do you remember Rio Ferdinand um, touting himself as um, as the Man United director of football? Uh, no, I three, don't remember three, that. three or four years ago. It was like, what what have you got to offer this role? Absolutely nothing. Wow. And, it's, and but clubs of clubs do the vast majority of clubs have learned. Um and so as a result, there are there are a lot of specialists in the game um who we would be able to attract. Um there'll be other other guys doing similar jobs at um at championship clubs. Um you could probably also look at maybe some at the bottom end of uh, bottom end of the Premier League as well as abroad as well. So it's mm-hmm. it's not uh it's not quite the the sort of devastating step into the unknown when like when Paul Mitchell left yeah um all those years ago that we were suddenly oh who's who's actually gonna who's actually gonna manage our fancy black box. Um it's yeah it's a lot more refined now and I think I would have, I mean, as long as Rasmus doesn't decide he wants to do it himself, then... Well, that was the only thing that that worried me ever so slightly when I saw the news was the thought of finally, you know, clinching promotion at the first attempt, getting that second spot, and then Rasmus Ankerson overseeing the transfer window (laughs) before we start another season in the Premier League. It's like, oh, 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 God. Um, So we'll see. But I I, kind of get the impression that this might move quite quickly because if Manchester United get their work done, then uh, I'm sure we may even know by the time you're listening to this. So we shall see.